Mr. Ambassador, speaking recently about the mayoral election in the uh, town of Razdan, you said that there you saw some real political competition. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the Armenian position claims that the authorities in Razdan heavily used the administrative resource in favor of pro-government candidates and uh, resorted to vote buying. Are you aware of these claims and uh, can it be considered real competition then? Well, Tigran, thank you uh, very much for, for, uh, for talking to me about this important issue of the upcoming elections and the Hrazdan election as well. Uh, as you said, I did uh, uh, go up to Harazdan uh, to, uh, uh, to visit uh, with people uh, around the polling places uh, and talk to some people on both sides about it. But let me just a answer more generally first before we turn to Harazdan, if I may. Uh, our goal, uh, one of our goals at the embassy here, of course, is to, is to, to see Armenia succeed as a, as a free and democratic country. Uh, and we would like to help We'd like to be a, uh, provide a bit of assistance uh, in that effort. And in order for that to happen, the elections here, the upcoming elections, need to be free, fair, and credible. And that means there needs to be a level playing field and media access and real political competition. And uh, my, my observation from the uh, Razdan election was two strong candidates and real political competition, yes. Uh, you have stated several times that you assist in uh, every way the holding uh, of the best ever elections in Armenia. But until today the debate is still on regarding the proposed voting system reform. Uh, the government has rejected the broad-based opposition uh, uh, demands for uh, switching to an all 100% uh, proportional system. And the government also has rejected the opposi uh, position demands for electoral stain and uh, cameras at polling stations. Uh, is there a guarantee that the best ever elections can be held in conditions like this? Well, what we're actually looking for, Tigran, is, is free, fair, and credible elections. Uh, that's the international standard, and that's, what the, that, and that's the standard that the president and uh, the speaker and, and everybody that I've spoken to in the government and outside the government aspires to, uh, is to conduct free, fair, and credible elections in the uh, upcoming elections and the presidential election next year in 2013. So that's the goal and, and, and we believe that that's everybody's goal and, and we are going to do our best uh, through observation, through conversations, uh, through assistance uh, to implement the new electoral law in a way that makes these upcoming elections free, fair and credible. The, the specifics of, the, uh, of how the voting is done, whether the voting is proportional or majoritarian, is for the Armenian uh, government to decide, the Armenian people to decide. Uh, as I understand it, there is no international standard uh, on that specific area as there is on other areas, like, like access to the media. That is an international standard issue that we'll be looking at very carefully. Well, the camera issue is interesting. In Harazdan, uh, uh, I actually did see uh, some cameras around the polling places and in and in the actual polling place. Inside the polling place there is a, there were cameras. Uh, there is a debate about precisely when the camera can be turned on and when it cannot be turned on. Uh, I, as I understand it, the new electoral law allows the cameras inside the polling places observing certain things but not other things and I don't know the details of all of that. I do believe there's a privacy issue about whether the camera can actually observe the voters. Uh, but the camera was in the polling place in Harazdan, and what I understood from the people that I talked to was that the camera in there would help make the voting and the vote counting uh, transparent and consistent with the electoral law. So the presence of the camera in the polling place that I saw, I think, is a good thing. Mm -hmm, thank you. The next question, the opposition considers it desirable uh, the, that international observers be present at all polling stations. Uh, uh, there are about 2,000 stations in Armenia. Meanwhile, the OSC says observers will be at a few hundred of them. Do you think such an observer deployment will be sufficient for a comprehensive monitoring mission? There's three levels of observation that I think will be helpful to the, the upcoming elections. The, the first is the, 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 the OSCE. You, you referred to the international observers, meaning the OSCE's uh, uh, observers called ODIR. Mm -hmm. uh, and, the, and that is the, the international standard for, for election observation. Uh, and they will be at several hundred uh, polling places. Uh, they'll be at the, mo the ones that are, in their view, the most critical ones, the ones that uh, uh, perhaps uh, could be expected to have problems. So I think the, 
not all polling places are the same. I think they will station themselves in, in, in areas where they think it's most important to have uh, international observers. In addition to them, uh, individual embassies, including the U.S. Embassy, uh, hopes to be invited to send our own uh, uh, poll observers uh, to elections as well. Uh, and recently we met with uh, NGOs, uh, the non-government organizations here, civil society, which also plans to send uh, Armenian local observers, local observers to the election as well. So there's three tiers of, of observers, uh, all of which I think have a different role uh, and all of which will be important uh, to contribute to free, fair and credible elections. So this is sufficient. Uh, local uh, observers and international observers uh, together Tigran will have to see. We, you know, we hope that the we hope and expect that the the the, the elections will uh, be conducted in a way consistent with the electoral law, uh, and the observers will have flexibility as to where they go. Uh, the uh, the I, I, there is a different uh, role f for the observers. Let me mention this uh, since, since you've asked again about observers. The ODIR, the OSC observers, it's their job to make an overall assessment, a public overall assessment that the elections are. Uh, about the conduct of the elections, to what extent uh, the elections meet international standards. That's for ODIR and the OSCE to do. Uh, our observers won't do that. Uh, we will not, uh, what we do, our observers are there to inform ourselves so that we get a first-hand look, objective look, at how the elections are conducted which will help inform our conversations with the government, with, other, with our partners here, the, the NGOs and the opposition parties. Uh, and to help us target our assistance better. So our goals, the U.S. Embassy goals in observers, is not to issue a public uh, statement assessing whether the election met standards or didn't meet standards. It's to inform ourselves, inform our conversations, and help us target our assistance. So will the observers be sufficient? Uh, there will be a good, a good international and a good local effort, uh, and I hope and expect that these observers will be able to uh, accomplish their mission, yes. Uh, there has been a lot of controversy around the recent government proposed legislation on emergency rule, uh, which if finally approved by Parliament will imply that the army will have the right to interfere in uh, internal uh, political processes, disputes. Opposition members as well as some experts already claim that this is being done for uh, the post-election period and don't rule out the possibility of another deadly strife similar to that following 2008 presidential elections. Uh, what would you say in this regard? Tikran, I think it's important uh, for in the pre-election period, throughout the pre-election period, not just on election day, for the entire 40-day period uh, in the pre-election period, but also in the very, very sensitive post-election period. It's important for there to be freedom of assembly so that those who have opinions, uh, civil society or parties who have opinions about what's happening or has just now happened in the elections, uh, have the opportunity to speak their piece uh, in a peaceful way in public. Uh, so we hope and, and, it would, and expect that there will be freedom of assembly uh, uh, in, the, in public spaces in Armenia for, the, for civil society, for the parties, for observers, uh, to state their opinions about what, what is happening and what has just now happened in the elections. That requires, of course, that all law enforcement uh, officials act appropriately uh, in response to a civil demonstration, uh, that all law enforcement should act consistent with the law and consistent with, the, uh, with, with, with freedom of assembly so that people can state their views in public, uh, in peace, uh, in a very independent and peaceful way. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tigran.